So this gives you the possibility to have your own trip, have your own idea. And that's why when people call me, like my sons, friends, they want to plant, they don't like the way I'm land. I say, yeah, you do this, you plant what you like. So it's many, many small gardens, make a bigger garden, a bigger garden, make a bigger garden, until the whole Philippines. It's a huge garden with thousands of happy people, with all of the food. Another early start, another beautiful landscape. We are obviously in front of this roaring, beautiful river. And usually where there is water, there is life. So we're heading to Kibathala Farms to meet up with Rene Kiefer, a Swiss national who's been here for about 20 years. And he does this thing called jungle farming and permaculture. Two things I have absolutely no idea about, but I'm pretty sure that we're gonna work with some really exotic vegetables, some great tropical fruit. And at the same time, since we're next to a body of water, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have some fish as well. Not only that, I think spending the day with him will just teach me so much and I'm just so excited to see what I can learn. I was a traveler after my education in Switzerland. I wanted to experience myself so I, I went to Africa, India, and back from India, back from Africa, and back to Switzerland. My last trip was eight years, so I ended up here in the Philippines, and somehow met my wife, and then I had a child, so I stayed here three years before I thought I have to establish something I know, something to materialize on this planet. So the only way I could do it by planting trees and plants. So that's how it started. I came from Puerto Calera to Mindanao around in 1994. I bought my first little piece of land along the river, started my jungle farm. The jungle here was lost in this area 50 years ago. 40 years ago, there was all jungle here. Jungle farming refers normally go in the jungle, cut the hole, and plant some taro, some bananas, and you follow the trails as a tribe, but you never really have an impact on the forest. It's like just removing a cell of your body and replace it with the same cell. But now, the new jungle farming, I thought I replace, I make my own jungle, man-made forest, and I farm within there. And this just came out of looking around and thinking and reforestation was always a brainchild. There was two typhoons, landslides, droughts, two massive El Niños already, floods. These are the natural problems. That's why it's called jungle farming. Like You can't manage a jungle. The jungle manages you. But there is a huge social and human problem we have to deal with here also uh, because the young generation is not willing to work the land except a small group who love to go back to the land but the people who came from here like trying to leave as much as possible. But look the gorgeous river, you see it now. Yeah, that's great. By the way, the river you cross on the bridge, that one joins that this river. What's the, what's the name of this one? Kalawai. Kalawai. And the other one is Kagean. This is Kalawai. There are five tributaries to Kalawai. This is one of them, which caused 2,000 deaths, no? Remember? Yeah, 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 the flood is right, yeah. <laughs> now you have a great space in the jungle, plenty of food, but you've got the jungle be the jungle. So this is more like the farming we do here. We carve out a niche, we plant some broccoli or whatever and grow this, but Usually this is the idea that the farm starting to manage itself and feed people, feed people with high quality, great, high vibrational foods, very fresh cut, chop, pilau, a lot of raw, raw leaves, raw vegetables, flowers, flower tips, tips of plants, to create a dense, wild, biodiverse, environment which gives space, creates the space 
for a lot of life forms, independent nation of this bird, independent nation of that lizard, independent nation of this anthill. I want to create autonomous life that the, the, the ants, they take care of themselves. The birds, they care. So as more you have created around you, they, things take care of yourself. So they let you also take care of yourself. So you plant your corn, you plant your thing, you get a pig from them. You take one of their members, you eat one of their members. But it's a deal, you know? So it's like uh, trying, trying to create life forms. We need to create money, but the first idea is not profit. I want the earth to profit, biodiversity. Do you know mulberries now are so expensive? Yeah? Yeah. In Australia, they dehydrate them and then they sell them back to you for $15 a pack. Yeah, yeah, this is the Kong Kong, Here. and this one is water pet chai. By the way, also medicinal, also edible in a certain way. Not poison at all. This water pet chai, this floating thing. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. These are floating ferns, actually. But the Kong Kong look is so vibrant and fresh. And we ferment the Kong Kong with uh, raw sugar and salt. Really? And yeah. for the pigs. Ah, so so yeah, it's pre digested and they don't get sick, they don't get diarrhea and everything. Yeah. You know, some people cooking the kong kong for the pigs, but it's very, very bad because you kill all the ants. Yeah. Like when this. it's fermenting, it's even more bacteria. It's better, yeah. yeah, like sauerkraut. Yeah, know, I love like fermented that. stuff, yeah. yeah. It's delicious. So after our jungle farming kind of foraging experience, it's kind of not not hard to get really inspired with the different ingredients that we find. Um, and so we have everything here that's basically grown in the jungle farm. So we're going to start off with just one red onion. And then remember the fish pond that we saw a while ago where we chopped up some kong kong? They were lucky enough to grab some tilapia last night from there. Got this beautiful, fresh, huge tilapia right here. All I did was gut it because that's all you really need to do. So we're going to cook this over a low kind of charcoal grill. And if you see this setup right here, it couldn't get more natural than this. Stuff an onion in the mouth here, and then grab some of the beautiful leaves. Take all that and just put that into my cavity here, just to keep really, kind of all those flavors really moist and beautiful. I'm gonna chop off my onion. I can leave the skin on it as well. And then I've got this beautiful young ginger. Quick mince. And all that goes into my fish. Then all I need to do is grab like some really cool salt, put that in there, make sure we salt all those cavities. Put that on my grill here. Really close it well. I'm gonna baste on the higher fire and then I'm gonna transfer it onto the low fire later. So we're gonna go ahead and get our pan nice and hot with this little bit of oil. To that we're gonna add one red onion. Then I'm gonna get some of my scallions here. We then have this beautiful piece of bamboo shoots. And another thing that's great, like we were a while ago with a boy that's from a local tribe here. He's kind of really young. He looks like he's maybe 20, 25. And he made us this fish and coconut dish that I've never had anything like that in my life. It was so good. And I feel that no one's documenting that. No one's taking notes of these recipes. So maybe eventually that's something we'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up just a little bit of my bamboo shoots. Throw some of that in there. Once my bamboo shoots are cooked down just a tad bit, what I'm gonna do is add in some of these other herbs and leaves that we got. So these are really kind of nice and fragrant. A Little bit of dill goes in there. Then I've got these beautiful, kind of very potent looking green chilies that I found right in the garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and add everything in there. Our fish is looking absolutely amazing. Next, I've got a bit of coconut water here. 
gather all that flavor from the pan, mix all that together. I'm gonna let that all cook down to like a kind of like sticky sauce consistency. Season it with a tad bit of salt. So I got our friend here to make us some perfectly grated coconut. I was thinking first to make a milk out of it, but after tasting it, I think we're gonna add it straight to here. Trying to mimic that fish that we had for lunch, which was amazing. And to all that, we're gonna add some of my kong kong here, which I very proudly went into the pond for. It was really fun. Grab all that, kind of cut it into multiple pieces. I just really cook that down a little bit. This doesn't really need much time. It's kind of like a perfect water spinach. So all that goes into my wok. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my McCormick cumin over here just to give it kind of a different taste and just really bring some different flavor to the whole thing, which I think will be perfect with the coconut. In goes this gorgeous coconut. And this is just really gonna bring all that flavor together. Mix all that together. Those are the colors of nature right there. So we'll let that kind of toast up, get nice and hot, nice and acquainted. All that chili to just kind of be perfectly counterbalanced with the fattiness of that coconut. All right, everything's pretty much good to go and ready. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer it to this wok here. Then I've got my banana leaves here, which I'm gonna serve as my serving place. And all you wanna do is kind of heat up all that fiber that's there. Once you have that beautiful kind of dark color, then that's ready to use. In the Philippines, this is extremely traditional to use banana leaves as a plate. And I think it just looks great. So next, I got my wok here. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my vegetables, put that right here in the middle. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fish, which is gorgeous. And we can go ahead and just make sure we peel off that first layer of skin. Now that is gorgeous. Spread everything out like that. Then with the help of your knife or even just a spoon, I can go ahead and just grab some of that. Put it on top of our vegetables. So on and so forth until everyone at your table is extremely happy and satisfied. We're just gonna finish that off really quickly. A little bit of salt on top. Some extra virgin olive oil. Then I've got these beautiful mulberries that we picked a while ago, which will kind of just balance everything out nicely. Just for that hint of color, hint of red. Seeing if I look like a place like this, this is exactly a type of food I'd make, just really kind of straightforward, using what's available, and just always delicious and beautiful food. Good stuff for the soul, stuff that comes straight from nature, stuff that when you look at it, you just want to eat it. That's what good food's all about, man. Cooking on fire, and making delicious fish. You can't help but feel alive in the setting. The uncomfortable moisture wraps around you like a security blanket. The buzzing of the bees and sonnets of animal calls, a constant whisper in your ears, lulling you into the most natural state of mind. I wish I could feel that every day. I saw an alarming graphic the other day. Our forests and jungles have been disappearing at a steady pace for the past decades. A dire situation mostly due to illegal logging and unsustainable modern development that prioritizes wallets over the environment. In the 1950s, 60% of the Philippines was a forest or a jungle. Today, we are closer to 20%. I don't know if that hits you, but that fact alone should be a wake-up call for the most of us. There are still only a few individuals who care enough for the environment to decide to dedicate their lives to its restoration. I wish more of us had that courage to drop everything and go back to being people who tend the land. I personally wish I had that ability. While I slowly get there and hopefully everyone listening joins me in that journey, let's take whatever steps we can to support initiatives in whatever capacity we can that attempt to fix what we broke. Be champions of the earth, and one day we might each be stewards of our own jungle.